Dynamic Split Screen is a great new feature in Video Studio. Create your own split screen video to show multiple clips and images and get full keyframe control so that your split screen dynamically changes over time exactly the way you want it. Make your own custom wipes, overlays and even add text boxes or graphics. Let's dive in. Launch the split screen template creator from your timeline here. First, we'll create our layout. You can create straight or curved line dividers that can go from top to bottom, left to right or diagonally across the screen. And then just drag and drop our video or image clips into these screen segments. Or drag them onto the numbered clips below the split screen. To position our clips within the screen segments, just click the clip under the split screen and you can then reposition and resize the clip so that the framing fits into your split screen just how you want it. But in this tutorial, I want to show you how we can dynamically change our clips and dividers over time with keyframing. So I'll undo these additions and start again from scratch. Any divider type can be keyframed within Video Studio, but in this instance, I'll try using shapes for my split screen. Let's create a circle shape to overlay our main video clip and then add in our clips. Now we can get creative. We can choose to animate the dividers by ensuring the selection tool is selected in splitting tools up here in the top right. The keyframe indicator at the bottom will show us any keyframes that have been created for the currently selected object. And by default, we'll have a start and end keyframe already added. As my main clip is of the subject looking out from the top of the mountain and the clip in the circle is the subject walking up the mountain, I want the circle clip to get smaller so as not to distract from the main clip too much but to show the story of the climb and then disappear off the screen as the camera moves past the subject in the main clip. If I jump ahead to about five seconds, this looks good. I'll reposition and resize the circle divider. I'll also add a little rotation just so it appears that the mountain is getting steeper, a subtle detail to help sell the idea of the climb getting harder. About eight degrees should be fine. I also want to adjust the framing of this clip as it progresses moving my subject from the right of the circle to the left to emphasize his progression up the hill even more. It's really useful that we can adjust the framing of the video clip separately from the split screen divider so you can keep your subject framed where you want them even when the divider itself is moving and resizing. I'll also add a little 3D motion just to make it even more dynamic and interesting. Let's put swivel and tilt to around 20 degrees each. This is looking pretty good, but a couple of seconds later, I want the focus entirely on the main clip. So I'll skip to around seven seconds and then just drag the circle off screen entirely. It's good, but I want the circle clip off screen a little quicker so I can just drag the keyframe to the left. Let's try around the six second mark. Okay, nearly done. Let's add one more thing as the circle clip disappears to pull attention back to the main clip. Video Studio lets us add graphics as well as video or image clips, as we can see here in the top right. I can add stars or hearts, and then keyframe them if I wish, but this isn't what I'm going for, because I can also import any graphic file in here by going to the folder icon. This best day ever graphic is perfect. Let's skip to around five and a half seconds where my circle clip is starting to move off screen and making sure the graphic is selected by using the Graphic Selector tool from the top right. I'll add a new keyframe. Then I'll add another new keyframe about seven seconds, which will be my ending position. Then skip back to the other keyframe that I just made. I want the graphic to move from the top of the screen, but grow slightly as it's doing so. So I'll resize it first, and then just drag it off the top of the screen, trying to keep it roughly centered as I do so. Now all I have to do is replicate this starting position at the default starting keyframe. I don't need to replicate the size change as well as the graphic will be off screen when it's resizing. So I just push it off screen. Just one more thing to show you. With graphics, we can select the layer order. So when there are multiple layers, we can choose which one is on top. If I want to put a white background behind the best day ever graphic, and then fill the screen as a transition at the end of the split screen, I can do this. At my second created keyframe on the graphic, I'll add a rectangle. 
I'm going to make it really small at first. I'll keep it white, but I could change the color of course if I wanted to. Now I need to move it on screen with my main graphic as I want it to be hidden behind it. So I'll add a keyframe here at the end of the main graphics movement, but I'm not going to change the layer order yet so I can still see where it is for now. Skip back to my first keyframe on my main graphic, place the scrubber there, then reselect my white rectangle and push it off screen so it starts moving at the same time as the main graphic. Then I just need to check at each frame that the rectangle will be covered up by the main graphic and maybe adjust its position and size slightly until I can see that the rectangle is moving with the graphic and will be completely covered by the white middle part of the main graphic. Now, when they both get to the center of the screen, I'll let them rest until about eight and a half seconds, then set a new keyframe for the rectangle. And I'm going to put rotation at 90 degrees here. Then add another keyframe just before the end at about nine and a half seconds, dragging the corners of the rectangle out so that it fills the screen. Make sure this is replicated at the ending keyframe, then jump back to the start and push the rectangle off screen so it doesn't start moving on screen until the main graphic does. And now I can finally click back on the layer order, pushing it behind the main graphic. Let's look at the result. Pretty nice. So this should give you a good indication of the power and scope of the split screen editor. Other parameters can be keyframed as well, such as border width and opacity. And as usual with Video Studio, if you've spent a lot of time keyframing some movements or you just like something that you've created in dynamic split screen and want to reuse it, but with different video or image clips at a later date, all of your work can be saved as a template that you can use again and again. With this, you can make your own lower thirds, animated corner bugs, crazy wipe transitions, or just about anything you can think of. Happy editing!